My name is Len Kalisa and I'm very glad I get a chance to present some research here and I'm really enjoying the conference so congratulations to organizers. Um, my first intention when uh, planning this uh, presentation was to show you something about the medieval floors or even some more recent um, historical floors uh, which occurred in Czech Republic or in Romania and I did some research on it but unfortunately since sections uh, didn't arrive uh, in time, in fact I <laughs> collected them yesterday so uh, I have to show you some of my older presentations maybe if somebody saw uh, relics of this presentation then, then this is a little bit improved <coughs> so um, uh, we will move to the uh, east part of the uh, Czech Republic to uh, the town Brno, uh, which is a beautiful small uh, town, the second biggest town in Czech Republic. And uh, those of you who uh, joined the micromorphological meeting had a chance to, to visit the, the, the city. Um, it's a medieval town surrounded by, by walls, and we know that the town uh, started to be constructed uh, at the end of 12th century and the beginning of 13th century. Unfortunately, from that period, from the very beginning of the uh, town construction, we do not have so many um, evidence, uh, especially when we are speaking about different types of houses uh, for different purposes. The locality I will talk about is located uh, right here, if you yeah, if you will take off the train, take off the train, you will see the Padovec Palace from the beginning of 12th century, 20th century, uh, where the excavations were were done. Um, <coughs> what's uh, uh, the main interest of medieval archaeologists is the, the demarcation of the medieval Burgess plots, uh, as well as uh, the division between dwelling houses and farming out buildings. Uh, the problem is that in these early phases of the town uh, uh, formation, these buildings have the same type of construction, so they are very similar, and the same type of used material for the construction, it means timber and earth, and also the floor plans are quite similar. So. Uh, we have to apply micromorphology to find out more about the um, uh, formation processes and purpose of the, of, of the house. Um, this is the plan of excavations and uh, the main features found there, uh, no, excavated there, were of a medieval age. So I will talk <laughs> about three, um, three objects with uh, laminated floors or uh, bottom infill of, uh, of the houses or of these objects. Uh, the first one is from the end of 12th century, the second one from the beginning of 13th century, and the third one also with well laminated floor or floor layer, looks like floor layer, is the underground granary. And there were some uh, kilns uh, uh, um, dated approximately to the same, to the same period. Uh, this is again the, 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 the view to the excavation, so the first house, the second house, and the underground granary. So the first example um, looks like this. There was a kind of dark uh, layer uh, in close observations. There was visible, very delicate lamination. Uh, I saw it, archaeologists didn't saw it so much, but uh, there, was, there was this lamination. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, there are no archaeological findings, no charcoal, no signs of burnings. And I forgot to say that uh, all these um, excavations are situated on low background, so there was no construction material or dark earth below these houses. Uh, it was sitting uh, on this, on this low material. Um, the uh, lamination uh, or small bands or laminae 
uh, were composed by uh, mainly by the uh, articulated artifacts, uh, artifacts, articulated phytoliths, uh, and uh, in some uh, mm, phases also by by lenses of of lows. Uh, I will show you micromorphological photos. So the bottom of the house was composed of these excremental features. There was probably some something very uh, eatable for for the mic microfauna. So we have a, a, a something like one millimeter thick layer of these excremental features. Um, then this is the background, the lowest background, heavily impregnated by humid acids, but it's just in some parts of of this uh, of this uh, of this strategy uh, so, um, of this of this uh, of this situation, and the laminated layers looks like this. In close observation, you will see that uh, they are composed by by articulated phytolates with um, uh, from time to time there are some. Uh, uh, mainly coarse grains included in it, and still a lot of uh, decomposed organic uh, organic matter. So the object was, uh, or this layer was uh, interpreted as a stabling, and uh, we were, if we have a stabling, uh, we uh, we can speak probably about uh, farm out building. There was done also some palynological analysis. Uh, which show typical medieval spectra with prevailing graminae uh, and secale cereale in both of objects. I will talk about another, uh, the second house. So this is for the first house. This is for the second house. And also there was some try to uh, some some. Um, I try to separate some phytolites uh, from this um, uh, from these uh, layers, but unfortunately we do not have uh, any uh, look in uh, Czech Republic, <laughs> so uh, um, it's just an example of phytolid separated from it. Uh, so the interpretation of that um, house was farm out building, uh, which means uh, some, some building used mainly for the, stabling of, uh, for, for the stabling of the animals. The second example had also quite similar, quite similar um, uh, mm, laminated uh, um, bottom part of the of, of the of the object, and uh, but it was slightly different. There was also micro lamination, but it contained layers of charcoal, layers of redeposited loose material, uh, some um, micro pieces of uh, daub, ceramic, and plaster, and. Uh, um, there was no oven in, in this house uh, and uh, there was also visible that uh, uh, the entrance to the house, there, there were no stairs, but uh, the, the, the laminated layers um, had some kind of angle, how people uh, used to go into the, into the house. So if you will have a look on the, uh, on the uh, thin sections, you can see nicely the lamina of microcharcoal and decomposed organic matter, partly burned, partly decomposed, against some charcoal, some, some, some quartz grains. This is the uh, piece of uh, metamorphic rocks, because some outcrops of metamorphic rocks are situated nearby. There, are also, there is also some kind of bioturbation, and there is still visible kind of micro laminations. So the interpretation of this layer, I don't know if we can call it floor, it's kind of floor, but not really maintained floor. It's just trumpet material on the surface with uh, probably no maintenance. So um, uh, we interpreted this, this object as a dwelling house. Uh, in fact, the uh, bottom part of the uh, dwelling house when people used to go in and out and they brought micro charcoal uh, on the on the bottom of their 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 uh, shoes. The third example uh, of laminated object was the most interesting and unfortunately there is a mistake in abstract book because there's some relict of some old interpretation. At the beginning we, we, we had a feeling we are dealing with the redeposited stabling because it really had a, had a 
quite similar features as, as a stabling. Uh, but we are dealing with the underground granary. It's more than, uh, it's something like two meters deep. And the bottom part of it was composed of laminated material. There are two big thin sections. Each of them is 10 centimeters long. So you have 20 centimeters of the laminated record. And the uh, single, single lamina or single layers of the lamina are composed mainly by the, uh, again, articulated uh, phytholids and interbedded with the uh, loose material or uh, material with uh, phytholids and partly decomposed organic matter or there is also layer uh, which is uh, charred and these are charred uh, articulated phytholids. Uh, and we did some analysis on the on this layer, and we find out that uh, the temperature of burning didn't exceed 300 degrees. So, and and, and as you will see, the uh, this charred layer is not totally charred. Sometimes it looks charred. Sometimes it looked like partly decomposed uh, black uh, organic organic matter. There is some um, some some there are some results from the. From the analysis of this black uh, charred layer, uh, uh, saying that um, uh, there is uh, Eli preserved, which means uh, that uh, that the uh, structure of this mineral was not changed, and it means that the temperature didn't exceed uh, uh, 300 degrees. Uh, there are some micromorphological photos of uh, these laminated layers, so you can see very delicate lamination uh, mm, composed of articulated phytolates. Also, uh, uh, quite layers with mm, highly impregnated phosphatic uh, layers, which are um, bioturbated and mechanically uh, damaged. Uh, then again, bioturbation, some relict of some grain. Uh, there is nicely visible the, the these cracks of uh, already impregnated um, material, which is originally composed of of these articulated phytolates. Again, uh, lamination, which is secondary after the impregnation uh, of humic uh, uh, of phosphates and, and humic acids, it's uh, it's mechanically disturbed. Uh, there is again nicely visible delamination, and this is the uppermost part of the infill, which is uh, charred, but not fully charred. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, I did some um, ethnographical um, uh, liter reference research on uh, on um, granaries, on the underground granaries. That is not so much known from the archaeological record. Uh, Maybe I don't know some references from Western Europe, but there is not so much done uh, in Central Europe, Slovenia, Slovakia, Romania. There are some examples, but mainly uh, on the uh, from the historical sources, not from the archaeological excavations. And there are similar uh, different ways of the uh, preparation of uh, underground granaries. And one of the type of the maintenance of the underground granary is to uh, stick the uh, grasses and straw on the surface of the walls of the granary and um, sometimes to harden it by plaster or just by fire but not not high fire just just to do kind of disinfection then the granary is filled by the grain and the grain uh, is well preserved from the humidity, from the, um, and also hidden under the surface. So it was quite common way how to hide the the corn uh, during the um, uh, times when some 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 um, um, there were some wars in the area. So people used to hide the, the grains under the surface. Uh, once so, to, so the grain can stay there for years. For there, there are examples from Spain uh, when they found grains when they excavated 
uh, granary with still fresh grain, which was there more than 20 years. So, so it's quite good way for, for s uh, storage. Uh, but when the uh, when the people want to excavate the grain. Um, um, out of the granary, they can do it, and they can do they can use the granary again and again and again, and um, they they use some way of reparation, which is usually connected with addition of new uh, straw or grasses on the walls of the ca of these uh, granaries, and again some um, uh, use of fire for the disinfection. And in my opinion, we have um, uh, nicely preserved at the bottom of the granary the different stages of using the granary uh, because it's well visible here. Uh, when they uh, reuse the granary, some of the um, uh, organic material with what, which was attached on the walls just fall down uh, to the bottom of the, of the granary and they didn't take off all the sedimentary material when they were cleaning the granary. So some relics of, uh, of these preparation surfaces uh, were preserved uh, at the bottom of the granary. And I think we can, we can see minimally three stages of the using this granary. I suppose this granary uh, was in use for, let's say, 20 years minimally because it was mm, it was good a good option how to store store the grain and what else these uh, granaries are well known from the village environment but we do not know so much granaries from the town environment in fact um, uh, in Brno there are just four uh, they were excavated just four um, granaries medieval granaries uh, uh, in, in inside the uh, uh, old old city so let's go to the conclusions um, the, the one of the conclusions was uh, that they were described um, laminated deposits uh, dated to the 12th to 13th century, but the formation processes of the of this lamination is totally different in every case, in every example. Um, and according to the micromorphologic analysis, we were able to divide uh, in first case the uh, a kind of farming house, a stabling house is preserved stabling, and uh, in the second uh, case uh, we were dealing with dwelling object, and in the third case of laminated bottom of the infill, uh, which looked like macroscopically like a stable, we were dealing with the um, um, mm, kind of preparation of the of the walls of the underground granary, which just after the using the granary fall down to the bottom of the object and was uh, preserved there, um, and 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 that's it. Okay, thank you for your attention.